Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. I welcome you to today's lesson on heat and temperature. I hope you've been having a wonderful day with wonderful days with our session e-learning. So today we'll be talking about heat and temperature and we basically want to find out the distinction between heat and temperature. So what is temperature? Temperature is the measure of average kinetic of the particles in a body. So we've actually looked at kinetic energy and we know that kinetic energy have to do with movement. So temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in a body. And so when you heat a particle, what happens is that the particle moves, the constituents of the material moves or shakes to cause heat. And so that is how come temperature is also defined as temperature as the measure of the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. So temperature is a fundamental quantity of any matter, which means that you cannot derive temperature. It is a basic quantity and it's everywhere. Units of temperature are Fahrenheit, Celsius or centigrade and Kelvin. These are used to quantify temperature. So let's look at thermometer. Thermometer is a device used to measure te temperature. For instance, this is a type of thermometer that is being used for the COVID-19 case to measure the patient's temperature. So this is called a gun thermometer. And then the other types are other type of thermometer. This is actually being used and placed under the armpit and this one is used for materials like measuring the temperature of food. Fahrenheit. So Fahrenheit is what we use to measure temperature and Fahrenheit was formulated by Daniel Fahrenheit based on his experiments using a mercuric thermometer and ice salt solution. Celsius was invented by under Celsius using pure water. Kelvin was discovered by William Thomson, also known as Lord Kelvin. He was the one who devised the absolute zero temperature. So the sign for Kelvin is a capital K. Let's look at internal energy. It may seem that the glass of water the glass water system has zero energy but in microscopic level the molecules are in constant motion and attractive forces between molecules that is potential energy the combination of motion and attractive energy of the molecule gives the internal energy of an object so what it means is that for every particle every material for instance water it may seem that they are together but actually the part individual particles in them are actually moving so let's say these are the individual particles in them they are actually in constant flow some moves up some moves down and they are in constant flow in the medium only solids cannot flow because they are compact together so because of the flow we, there is an existing internal energy in all materials, especially those that can flow. For example, gases have higher internal energies than liquids compared to solid. So, which has the highest internal energy? 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, so they all have the same they all have the same internal energy because they are all liquid of the same volume and they have the same temperature that is 90 degrees celsius and 90 degrees celsius which has the highest internal energy they all have the same because the temperature is the same in both liquids because this one is much smaller this is much smaller than this but the temperature is the same which has the highest internal energy? Of course, 
this one has the highest internal energy because the temperature is high it contains more heat than this so this is 100 degrees and this is 90 degrees which has the highest internal energy so likewise this has the highest internal energy because the energy is high which has the highest internal energy so this will have the highest internal energy because it contains 100 degrees celsius the temperature is 100 degrees celsius and for this the temperature is 50 degrees celsius okay so let's look at what we call thermal equilibrium equilibrium means balance so it is a condition where bodies in a system cease to transfer heat and it's manifested by a single temperature so for instance if you had if you have a body system 1 to be very hot and system 2 to be cold what will happen is that once they are joined together once they are joined together there will be flow of energy or heat from the hot part to the cold part or the less hot part so the energy will flow into them until they get to a point where the energy levels are the same so the temperature here will be the same let's say 50 and here will also be 50 then energy stops flowing and that is what we call thermal equilibrium so there is also a system called hypothermia and hypothermia means that the body has a low temperature and let's look at how body reacts to cold so body reacts to cold by shivering so when you shiver when you shiver what happens is that the body generates heat so that you can counter the cold you have so you realize that your joints start shaking your body starts shaking and then you call yourself together to produce much heat for the body to adapt to the cold so this is this ends our topic on heat and temperature i hope you understand everything that was said i've given some questions and i hope this video will help you solve them until we meet again bye, -bye.